Hi everyone, hope you're doing well, and happy Woman One today. Uh, today we're going to be talking about massage safety and inappropriate massage behavior. So we'll just give a little bit of time to get some folks in the room, get Woman Walker in the room, and then we'll get started momentarily. In the interim, if you are in need of HIV or STI testing, please contact Whitman Walker Health at 202-207, oh sorry, that's still the wrong number, at 202-797-4439. Again, 202-797-4439 and schedule an HIV or STI testing appointment. If you are in need of a COVID-19 vaccine, you can call 202-207-2480. And it looks like we've got Robin Walker in the space, so let's get them on stage. Cool. Welcome, Robin Walker. Thanks for joining. So, my name is Jewel, and I use she, hers pronouns, and I work to bring educational Instagram lives to this space with Robin Walker's community health team. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, Whitman Walker's Community Health Department has expanded its outreach efforts to include the social media platform. So together, we cover various topics about HIV and STIs, sexual health practices, access to care, social determinants of health, and public health interventions. The community health team is here to educate and support you. Uh, Again, today we're going to be discussing um, massage safety and inappropriate massage behavior and kind of what to expect in those spaces and what should be red flags in those spaces. So to start off, we'd love to give uh, context and definition. So what is a massage? Merriam-Webster defines massage as the manipulation of tissues as by rubbing, kneading, or tapping with the hand or an instrument for relaxation or therapeutic purposes. Uh, Additionally, a simple Google and Oxford languages search will return the following definition of the rubbing and kneading of muscles and joints of the body with the hands, especially to relieve tension or pain. So massages uh, in all should be really stress and pain relieving experiences or anxiety relieving experiences. They shouldn't cause anxiety or stress or or pain. Um, A little bit about experiences with massages. I have been very fortunate and blessed to be a person who uh, gets to get some massages. I've, I've really enjoyed them throughout my life. I think I didn't, I guess, fall in love with the experience of getting massages until I got to go to Thailand with some of my friends. And one of the main things that we did was get uh, really wonderful Thai massages while we were there. They're very full body experiences, um, really active experiences. Um, but like at the, the end of each one, we're like feeling really like noodly, like our bodies just feel very taken care of and very, uh, you know, stress relieved. Like it just felt amazing. We almost had to kind of make sure that we hadn't gotten too many uh, and they just were just like memorable experiences. Like I think about the massages that I had in Thailand, whenever I think about the standard massages I want to get. Um, I've had a handful of massages here in the States. I would say that they are mostly not memorable in the way that the ones in Thailand were. And then I also have had a few massages by this amazing massage therapy worker uh, in Jamaica one time. And she was so talented in her craft that she could feel in my ankles that I needed to get my period and like made sure to massage them in a certain way that gave me my period the next day. So she just (laughs) knew what she was doing. And uh, that was just really cool to hear and experience, but also like, I'm not a person who loves getting my period. So if I had known, I might have been like, hey, feel free to skip these ankles. Uh, But she gave both myself and my friend our periods uh, by making sure to do the pressure points on our ankles because she could feel that our periods were coming. So very cool that that's a thing with massage work. But what does it mean, or like, what does consent look like, or what does it mean to have consent when it comes to massages? So inappropriate behavior can also be directed from either the client or the therapist when it comes to massage work. However, um, because health professionals or massage therapy workers hold hold a position of power, um, they uh, are often kind of, I guess, the ones who are put in more of a position of, like, onus to not abuse that power um but they also have a right to refuse you know service to certain clients depending on how the interactions are going in the massage space uh but ultimately the the law will hold the business provider or the massage therapy worker provider uh, responsible for their behavior in massage spaces so uh that's just an important thing to to keep in mind as we have the cover as we have the conversation so uh appropriate massage behavior looks like Consent. So consent during a massage looks like a professional 
understanding that one person is receiving a massage and that the other person is giving it. There's consent around what is deemed appropriate during the massage, whether it's how dressed or undressed the client is, and that there will be no sexual advances, and that an allotted time frame will be uh, what used to mark the beginning and the end of the massage experience. Consent also goes both ways, again, between the client and the massage therapist. During the massages, there's no rule that the client has to be unclothed to have their massage. You know, if the client is happy to do so, that's fine. But if a client feels more comfortable leaving their undergarments on or their clothes on, then this should also be respected by the massage therapist. In massage therapies, uh, the inner and upper thigh should never be touched unless specified by a client who has a sporting injury or uh, just an injury that requires access to this part of their leg. Uh, in these instances, the genital area should always remain draped and the therapist must never move their fingers up toward the private genital area of their clients. Massage therapists should also work their best to ensure that their client's hands aren't in vulnerable position during massage work. So for example, if a client is lying face down with their arms along their sides and palms facing upward, then this may come in contact with the genital region of a massage therapist. Therefore, it's best if the client keeps their hands tucked underneath their hips during the duration of their massage. So Inappropriate massage behavior can look a few different ways. Um, this could be inappropriate personal conversation during the massage. So if someone's commenting on another person's body, that's super inappropriate conversation given the context and, and uh, the client and, and um, you know, service relationship. Uh, it looks like inappropriate body contact. So if this is uh, either a massage therapist who's touching the client in places that they shouldn't be touched or vice versa, or um, if there are certain body parts that are touching, uh, you know, the client or the, the massage therapist, vice versa, uh, that, again, this is inappropriate behavior. It can also look like informal comments. For example, your eyes are so beautiful. That's, I don't think, the kind of comment you want to hear when you're on the massage table. It can also look like personal phone contact or like text messaging or social media contact outside of a business context. For example, um, a business email regarding your service is appropriate. Uh, you know, like what time is your appointment at again? However, an email that contains a joke that's of no uh, relevance to the business and isn't like of appropriate um, content is not uh, appropriate behavior. You can also consider giving an inappropriate gift to the client or massage therapist uh, inappropriate or uh, poor, inadequate, or lack of draping provided to the client. So if the client, you know, wanted to be covered a certain way uh, and the massage therapist is ignoring it, or if, um, you know, yeah, same thing if the, if, if the person, you know, expected to be covered in a certain way and they're not being respected by uh, in that way and, and their decision for how covered they want to be isn't being respected, that's another thing to look out for. Uh, and it can also look like a lot of disruption and changing massage therapists unexpectedly during your appointment. Uh, when you were to have just one person working on you and and kind of not have people in and out of the room when you're in a vulnerable position of being unclothed or, or scantily dressed. So what are some things you can do? If you are at risk uh, or if you're in an at-risk situation as a client um, or if you yourself the most therapist are in an at-risk situation, um, you can always seek professional or, or legal advice. Um, if you're the client, you can contact the massage association or the kind of health, the, the health licensing office that uh, would, that this massage parlor would answer to, or massage uh, workspace would answer to. If you're the client, again, you can also ask for a different uh, massage therapist to work on you instead of the person who you had working on you. Uh, I also want to talk a little about massages and sexual assault, uh, but I think we should define sexual assault before we can kind of talk about that. So sexual assault is an act in which a person is coerced or physically forced to engage against their will sexually. It is also defined as non-consensual touching of a person, and sexual assault is an umbrella term that covers a wide range of unwanted sexual acts. So when a massage therapist inappropriately touches a client, it is a criminal offense. And a therapeutic massage should never involve contact with genitals, especially um, that of a client's vagina or front hole, penis, or testicles. When the massage therapist initiates this, it is considered abuse. And if the client requests it, it's considered uh, prostitution or sex work. Now, how do you go about reporting massage therapists and sexual assault? Uh, it's best to report the incident right away to preserve evidence and notify authorities to act. And once you, um, you know, once you can terminate the session and get to a safe location, here are some of the steps you can also take. You can seek medical care. 
by visiting your physician for an examination following a sexual assault incident. Even if you don't believe you're physically injured, it's important to seek medical help right away um, to begin coping with the physical and mental effects of sexual abuse. You can also secure legal advice. So an experienced sexual assault attorney can uh, aid with the following steps and help determine whether uh, you have legal options or like what your legal options are. Uh, this is super important to do sooner than later as your attorney can also provide counseling and care resources needed for your recovery and also begin work on a lawsuit if that's the kind of direction you'd like to take. You also can consider contacting local enforcement. You can contact police as soon as possible after a sexual attack and describe to them exactly what happened and be sure to include all the details as they may later be used as evidence. You can also speak with police about your or speak with police with your attorney by your side for reassuring support and legal counsel because uh, I think it's not too much of a secret um, that police just don't seem to have the best training or training at all when it comes to uh, interviewing and uh, providing space to people who have experienced sexual assault and sexual abuse. Uh, you can also file a complaint with the business. So whether it's a spa chain or a privately owned business, you should file a formal complaint at the location where you received your massage immediately following your session. Your lawyer can help you word your complaints so that your rights and privacy are protected. And finally, you can also preserve physical evidence. So avoiding showering or discarding articles of clothing is a good thing to do. If at all possible, you want to refrain from using the restroom or even washing your hands, you may risk losing vital pieces of evidence to support your claims, and your attorney can help you identify what may be essential evidence and how to best preserve it. Now, uh, if you have experienced anything that's been inappropriate in a massage therapy space and you're in need of resources as it relates to, again, this inappropriate experience or sexual assault experience during massage therapy, you can contact the Pride Law Firm. They're based out in San Diego, California, and you can give them a call at 619-514-2968. Again, that's 619-514-2968. Thank you all for taking some time to learn about massage safety. Uh, before we go, of course, just want to remind you that if you need to access HIV or STI testing, you can do so by calling Whitman Walker at 202-797-4439 to schedule an HIV or STI testing appointment at either their Max Robinson Center location in Anacostia or their 1525 14th Street Northwest location uh, near Logan Circle. And if your, if your community or your organization is interested in Whitman Walker providing mobile health services in your neighborhood, you can contact mobile health at Whitman Walker.org. You can also access HIV prevention tools like PrEP or PEP or start HIV treatment with Whitman Walker as well. Again, just call them at 202 797 4439. Now, because we are battling a couple of public health pandemics, we want to talk about COVID 19 and vaccines. If you've already gotten vaccinated, that's great. You've taken a really important step toward preventing yourself, your loved ones, and your community from getting sick. Multiple variants continue to spread, uh, so it's super understandable if you want to keep wearing your mask uh, as the vaccine is not 100% effective. And we continue to uh, experience more contagious variants, and it's winter time, so people are just inside unmasked and in enclosed spaces more often. Uh, so just stay alert. If you haven't been vaccinated and you're not looking for an appointment, Whitman Walker Health does have COVID-19 vaccine available. So call them at 202-207-2480 to make an appointment. And if you are having trouble making an appointment with them and you're a DC resident, you can visit vaccinate.dc.gov or call 1-855-363-0333. Excuse me. <laughs> if you're a Maryland resident, you can visit covidlink.maryland.gov or call 1-855-634-6829. And if you're a Virginia resident, you can visit vaccinate.virginia.gov or call 1-877-829-4682. And if you have not been vaccinated and you're not looking for an appointment, please continue to follow CDC guidelines for mask wearing, social distancing, and the like. Uh, it's super important that you consider to get, getting the vaccine and discuss COVID precautionary measures with those who are around you, but especially when you don't know whether a person has been vaccinated or not. And again, because we're in multiple public health emergencies or instances right now. Uh, we want to talk about uh, monkeypox and um, what to do. So according to the CDC, there are more than 29,000 cases of monkeypox uh, documents in the U.S. And if you're in D.C., you can pre-register for an mpox or a monkeypox vaccine appointment at preventmonkeypox.dc.gov. Virginia is working with local care providers to contact trace and identify those who are most in need of a monkeypox vaccine. And the Maryland Health Department released a pre-registration system that you can register for a vaccine appointment on. 
No matter where you are, please visit your state's local health department for more information on how to register and get vaccinated against monkeypox. For DC monkeypox vaccine locations, they are first come, first serve, and like walk up locations, and they're for eligible residents, and the hours and locations vary each day. So you can see what the latest schedule is by visiting preventmonkeypox.dc.gov. Please remember to follow the Whitman Walker family on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Whitman Walker, and check their website at www.whitman-walker.org for the most up-to-date information on their services. And for more COVID-19 resources and general Whitman Walker services, give them a call at 202-797-4439. And again, please also follow some of their family programs uh, at Real Talk DC underscore and at No Filter DC.